Breakfast. Yep. Guys, we are at the uh, base of the Thunder Wolf lift, and uh, hopefully, they fire it up soon. As we are rubbing elbows with some of the coolest people in the industry today. <laughs> Brian Call is right there. How are you doing, brother? Shooting with Brian Call, Gertie Bowman. I came bold Ooh, with just four arrows. Dude, I like your style. You ever hear those stories about Chuck Adams going out hunting with only one arrow? Is that true? Chuck Adams going out hunting with only one arrow? Is that a legend? <laughs> Corey Jacobson knows the background of the story. Because they're right? the same age. <laughs> Ouch! Wow! Ouch. I shouldn't say I'm a year old. Punches! <laughs> punches already! <laughs> this is, uh, I believe, the third year in a row we've opened this day on a chairlift. Although, this chairlift is a different one than before. They're doing a little construction up here at Big Sky, Montana. But as you can see, the view is gorgeous. There's not a cloud in the sky. Light winds out of the northwest. I don't know if, where they're out of, to be honest, but kind of sounded like a weatherman. <laughs> Gonna be a fun day. We're shooting with guys from Yeti, Corey Jacobson, a multi time world elk calling champion, Gritty Bowman, Sam Soho, and uh, Jason Matzinger. Into the High Country TV show. If you're into that, Sportsman's Channel. Wait, Mountain Ops, good. Guys? Yeah, we a good group. Yeah, we have a great group. Jordan from Mountain Ops. Yeah. yeah. Montana, though, is a uh, pretty special place. Those of you guys that live in Montana, congratulations. You've, you've really won at life. Probably one of the best states out there. I always tell people like, where you? When they ask me where you're from, I'm, I always say God's country, Idaho, and I believe Idaho is one of the most beautiful states. But I will have to give it to Montana. It's just one step above. And so, then you have Utah, that's like 17th best state, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm probably not going to argue that. So I'm not native Utah. Claim my Oregon roots still. Anyway, today's going to be a lot of fun. Stick with us. Uh, we're going to shoot straight, case, right? We're not going to slap the trigger. No. We're going to have a smile. We're going to laugh. We're gonna have fun. And by golly. By golly, people are gonna like us. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> nice. Target number nine and shooting very, fairly well. We have some shooters in this group, but we get a ram here at 53 yards in the shadows. See if uh, Gritty Bowman can hit it. Shot by. We said earlier this course has got a lot more realistic hunting situation type shots. It's been fun, and we've already had an elk, a lion, and a bison. Big targets are much better to shoot at than little ones. Breather, Sam and the boys are retrieving arrows. We're on 22. A few more targets left. <laughs> Old Gritty Bowman's been shooting with one arrow for, uh, I think, about 19 or 20 targets now. Just holding on. It's a matter of time. Does he finish with it, guys? Or does he not? What do you think? He has one arrow left with about four or five targets. 62? 63, I think, is what we're getting. Okay. Yeah, so Holt said like 52. No. Yeah, 51. 51. Sorry. <laughs> Oh! I'll be joining <laughs> someone with Looking arrow retrieval. Forward, it. Very ball, draw. Three, two, one. That never works. I held 105 and I had to double check. Yeah. Oh, oh. We're about at the end. Take exactly I think people are getting tired of the broken arrow. It started off really good. And uh, you lose a little confidence when you start bombing stuff at 116 yards and then you lose your arrow. But it has been a lot of fun today. Such a good group of guys. We've not shot with several of these folks before, which is probably the coolest part. Getting to shoot with Corey Jacobson, who, if I'm not mistaken, 
is a 10-time world elk calling champion. Has elk 101, a bunch of cool stuff, like one of the probably the best elk hunters that is uh, walking around these parts. And then Jason Matzinger, who has a really sweet project coming out called Circle of Life about um, a sheep hunt that he did in Montana last year. We're actually even going to watch that tomorrow here. And then the guys at Yeti, and you all have seen Gritty Bowman and the Mountain Ops crew before, but uh, man, super good time. And then Sam Solholt, who is a bus owner, a public land advocate, and he's got an uncanny ability to call like a wild axis deer, which we're gonna go track him down and he's gonna call on film. So any of you guys that have ever chased axis deer in Texas or Hawaii, you're gonna be able to listen to Sam and you'll be like, oh my gosh, he nailed it. So let's go find Sam. A couple tips? A couple yeah, tips. New Think like uh, new elk hunters or hunters coming from the east. We get a ton of emails. Hey, I'm going on my very first elk hunt out west. Yep. That'd be so it. I think the number one thing that I still struggle with and everybody struggles with is the wind. And paying attention to the wind is everything in elk hunting. Even more so if somebody coming from east, you know, you think about wind and thermals for whitetail, but elk are even far more important just because you're in the mountains and the thermals are different. So everything's wind. That's my number one platform and foundation from there. You know, calling's the most exciting part. So <laughs> practice with calls, but uh, when you're in the woods, don't ever forget the wind. And if they want to learn more, we've got, just go to elk101.com. Tons of articles, everything from beginner to advanced. And if you're interested in the University of Elk Hunting online course, we have a full online course that you can sign up for and learn all you want to know about elk hunting. He knows a couple things about elk, I suppose, right? <laughs> two. Two. <laughs> two how many How many titles is it? Is it double digits now? Yeah, it is. Ten? Ten. Ten time. Ten time world elk calling champion. So, yeah, he's uh, got a bunch of cool content and... The wind, something I don't think we think a lot about sometimes because you take it for granted, but very good, uh, very good tip. Yeah. Did uh, Sam have some tips for us on calling axis deer? Yes. So if you're hunting axis deer, the one sound that you need to be aware of, and this means that you have been spotted or smelled, um, it's an alarm call. It sounds a little bit like this. Hey! And I hear the people that hunted with Sam were quite frustrated. He kept walking around making that sound while they were hunting. <laughs> now, the next call uh, is the axis roar. It's um, kind of like the alarm call, just a little bit more drawn out. It's like, hey, hey, So there it is. Are you a 10-time world champion? I'm, a, I'm an 11-time world champion <laughs> <laughs> axis deer caller. Um, I only hunt in Hawaii, though. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it, guys. World elk calling champion, world axis deer calling champion. Eleven time. <laughs> we got all the folks. Make sure you go check out Cody Rich and the Rich Outdoors podcast, yeah. and also go check out Jason Matt Singer's Into the High Country, which is on Sportsman's Channel, right? It is every Monday night. Every Monday, Monday night. Monday. And make sure you go to MySpace and follow, follow me. Brian. Follow, follow Brian. I'll put you on my top eight. MySpace. <laughs>